Okay, as the, soon as the, the slain goat was dead, who went in within the veil, presenting the blood of this goat before the typical throne of the Most High? Leviticus 16, 15, and 16. Leviticus 16, 15, and 16. Leviticus 16, 15. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat, on the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. That's what he done. So it was the high priest taking the blood within the veil to the mercy seat that tip, that that symbolically symbolizes the rising Mashiach, figuratively I might say, taking his blood once and all for all to a tribes of Israel before the throne of the Most High which is in the fourth dimension in heaven there to intercede for us the twelve tribes of Israel as our high priest Surely, it's pretty should be pretty simple to understand. The slain goat represented the crucified Mashiach. The high priest, by taking the blood of this slain goat into the veil, to the mercy seat, in the Holy of Holies, a type of throne that represents the most high throne carnally or symbolically. Represented and did the work of the risen Mashiach who ascended to the right hand of the Most High. To intercede for us as our high priest. To the throne of the Most High, representing and carrying the sins of the twelve tribes of Israel. So Azazel didn't represent the work of the risen of Mashiach. But this live goat. took the blood of the veil to the mercy seat. The high priest going into the veil, within the veil, into the Holy of Holies, symbolized the Mashiach Yahweh Shai's return, going to the right hand side of the Most High. This is all symbolism. return to heaven to sit on the right hand side of the most high the work he did while he was in the holy of holies symbolized the Mashiach Gavashai work all this time all these years and his blood being shed as the ultimate sacrifice for the children of Israel not coming back out symbolizing when they come back out or the holy of holies to symbolize the Mashiach Yavashai's return to earth what did the high priest do 
when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon his, the head of the live goat, confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness, and uh, their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat in the wilderness, and Aaron shall wash his flesh with water, and and he to let the goat for the, for the scapegoat Azazel shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water. Afterward, coming to the camp, you know we read that in verses twenty to twenty six. The Azazel goat, not our sin bearer. Let's get it straight. The justice with the Most High is not the Most High a power of justice, as well as compassion and mercy. Who is the real author of our sins? The devil is the author of them, even as Mashiach Yahushai is the author of our salvation, our Redeemer. He who saves. Masha Kabashai took our guilt, our blame, our sins upon himself as an innocent sacrifice, substituting himself for us. He was innocent. He was an innocent victim. Remember, he didn't open his mouth to say anything because he knew what his job was. He loved us. See, no greater love than a man to give his, his life for his friends. He said, you my friends, you do what I say. And he was willing to die for our sins. And he did die for our sins. Our guilt our sins were carried by him and him alone nobody else and the most high forgives them when we repent and accept his sacrifice his ultimate sacrifice I might say yet if we stop there is there full justice the real cause, the actual author of those sins, was Satan, the devil. Is it justice for Mashiach Yahushai to bear guilt that is not his, while the devil goes off scot-free? Can understand this. He went through all of that, but the devil just running around from the from the garden all the way to the end, scot-free? Oh no. Do you not suppose that the Most High's great plan will finally work full justice by placing that original blame and guilt right where it belongs? Remember, what is it that we did wrong until this day? A lot of you probably don't even think of it. I bring it out a lot all the time. What do we do? And what are we still doing? Eating of the tree of good and evil. That we weren't supposed to do. Where, where do we get that from? We got it from the devil. So what does the devil continually do? What do you continue to have us do? Continually eat of what? The tree of good and evil. Check this out. Mashiach Abishai, he bore our guilt. For we have been guilty. All of us. Even though the devil was the original cause of it all. As I just mentioned. But justice certainly demands that the most high place right back on the head of the devil is guilt.
not our guilt, but his own guilt for leading us into sin. We were guilty. We were guilty too. And we're still guilty. But I'm not sure I was shy bearing our guilt. But our sins still fall back on the devil as his own guilt. Because remember, where did it start? Or have you forgotten? It started right in the garden. So it tells you in Revelation 12 and 12, the devil comes out with much wrath because he knows he has a short time. And 17 says he's going to come upon, he's going to come down upon, he's going to be wroth with the Israelites, those that keep the commandments that had a faith in the Mashiach Kavashan. Because we know, we understand the problem and the things that he has done to keep us from the Most High. Now that we're coming back to the Most High, being in that we are following his law, statutes, commandments, and having faith in the Mashiach Kavashan, now he, he moves to the side. When we say he's going to set us above all nations, that's the kingdom. But only those is going to be obedient to him. The most high. So, the devil is the, the real author of all sin. And he went to the woman, he, and she went to the man. Adam and Adam fell, fell for it. That's why the most I told him, man, because you have listened to your woman. Curses the ground, man. For his sake. Therefore, we're born into a world these last days of those that have continually ate of the tree of good and evil, and they call evil good and good evil. That's why they can't come to this light. Which is the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, and do what's right because they think that the devil is the light. But the Mashiach El Shai said, I'm the light of men. You understand this? Because that's the world we were brought into these last days. Would you think he's going to show you the way to the kingdom? I don't think so. you the author of sin. That's why he make it hard for us to be one with the Most High. Because he the author of sin. Remember he told that first lie. He said, we're going to die if we eat of the tree of good and evil. No, you won't. You won't surely die. That's the first lie I ever told. And Masha Gavishai said in John 8, 44, You are your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do is a murder from the beginning. Abode not in what? The truth. Because the truth ain't in him. When he lied, he lied of his own because he was a liar from the beginning. So I just said. And until this day, people are falling for the lies of the devil. He knows he's going to be told in the lake of fire. So he's going to carry as many people as he can with him. It's another point. As Azel, goat carries away the sins of all the people already forgiven. These sins already were fully paid for by Mashiachim. Mashiach substitute sacrifice. Symbolizing by the killing of the innocent goat, but for those same sins were finally laid on the live goat. They had been previously paid for by the death of the slain goat. The devil is the real author of all sin. You know that? He the real author of all sin. And he gets to that woman. And that woman gets to that man. So if you don't, you don't believe me, just read Genesis the third chapter.
So you got to drive him away first to be one with the Most High. But how can you drive him away when he's, the way you are is normal in your eyes and you can't be corrected because you think you're on point. And you off as ever. Rolling with Satan. With a devil. But see his. his him going to the most high on our, on, on our behalf. Or accusing us. Accusing us. Accusing us. It's going to be brought back on his own head. That's why he's going to be thrown in the lake of fire. And a whole lot of people are going to be thrown in the lake of fire with them. Because. That's their power. That's their power. So he's got to put justice. Going, he has to put that guilt and that sin right back on his head. The Mashiach of Shai going to bear the, the the devil's sins and guilt and the things he done wrong. As well as our guilt too? No. Remember he said the angels, all the angels bow down to him. Watch that was shy carrying our sins. The children of Israel, because we the ones given the laws, and we the ones that were told to be obedient to the most High's laws, therefore we broke them. We're disobedient, therefore Mashiach was shy to come. And his precious blood was shed for the children of Israel. Because the other nations, he said, all the other nations, guys are idols. They didn't have the laws of the Most High. And still don't, to this day. Thus the killing and the sprinkling of the blood of the first goat. Visibly set forth the means of reconciliation with the Most High. Through the sub substituted sacrifice of an innocent victim so finally the sinning away of the second goat laden with those sins the expiation of which we must understand have been signified by the first goat no less vividly sets forth the effect of that sacrifice and complete removal of those expedited sins from the presence of the Most High. But Satan is always accusing us before the Most High. And he's even when we pray, he's still around. His power over men is, is founded on sin. But all these sins of which he is the author are laid back on him after being removed from us by a Mashiach Yahushai, by Hashem a Mashiach Yahushai, then Satan shall have lost his claim on us. And no longer can he accuse us when we really look at the faith in a Mashiach Yahushai, this law of the Spirit. And come to higher levels of spirituality and realize that the Most High is working with us. Because we're doing what we're supposed to do and following Him, His rules and regulations, His laws, statutes, commandments. So the acceptance of the first uh, goat, the blood of the first goat, which is the Mashiach I was shy. That's symbolizing complete propitiation and pardon of Israel's sins. So the city of Azazel bearing away those expedited sins symbolizes the complete removal of all sins. Deliverance by the atonement from the power of the adversary. The devil or Satan. The sacrifice of the first innocent victim was the means of reconcil reconciliation with the Most High, reconciling ourselves back to the Most High, but not yet complete justice. 
The driving away of the second live goat shows the final atonement by placing the sins on their author where they belong, the devil, and the complete removal of the sins and their author from the presence of the most Zionist people, and thus the complete deliverance of the people, the children of Israel, from the power of Satan. You, you, you deliver yourself when you follow the laws of the most high. When you have faith in the Mashiach Yavashai, his precious blood, we as we going over shed, being shed for us. You go on the Webster Dictionary, it says, the atone means to set at one, to join in one, to form by uniting. We shall not be completely joined in one and united with the Most High until this is done. You know, notice after laying both his hands on the live goat, Az Azazel, Aaron had to wash and cleanse himself before coming in contact with the people. So too, the fit man also had to do what? Wash his clothes and bathe himself after coming in contact with the Azazel goat. Before he came into the presence of the people or the camp. The symbolism is certainly that of having come in contact with the devil. Clean yourself up. Before you come around the people. Notice. He's like to put in these already expedited and forgiven sins on the head of this live goat does not take place until after the high priest returns from the Holy of Holies within the veil. So this typified an act to take place after the second coming of Mashiach Yavashai to this earth. It was after they came out of Holy of Holies that he did this. But if the live goat represented the resurrected Mashiach, then the sins of Mashiach Yavashai born on a tree were placed by another. Typified by the high priest back on the Mashiach Yavashai after his resurrection. Would this make sense? Is a theory of the Azazel goat being Mashiach consistent? No. But the plain simple meaning does fit at every turn and it's consistent it's consistent the first goal represented the innocent of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai who died for our sins, the children of Israel the high priest represented the risen Mashiach going within the veil to the mercy seat a throne of the Most High in heaven symbolically for, for, from that point to now all these thousands of years. And the high priest returned to place the sins finally upon the head of the live goat. Representing the return of a Mashiach, Yahushua, who will place the sins he bore on their author and creator of sin, the devil. And who will send him away alive into a desolate burning totally inflamed lake of fire for the last judgment but we're going to lock him up he's going to lock him up first for a thousand years so we're going to send him like the goat went into the wilderness he's going he to lock him up he's going to lock him up when he come back just like that goat went into the wilderness he's going to lock him up for a thousand years when he come back Oh yeah. As it is written. And he's going to be subject to 
what is what it what it is that's written. <laughs> The devil gonna be sent away. You just, and you see these these uh, these things that's symbolized in Leviticus that we went in Revelations uh, 19 and within the 20th chapter. We see these things happening. How you know the devil is sent away. The symbol here used in the, the bottomless pit, whatever you know. Which would be a desert of wilderness. Also, twofold is Esau going into the Caucasus Mountains at that time. And he's sent there by a fit man, an angel from heaven. And the devil is not killed. He ain't killed. He's going to be killed when he comes back. He does not die then. But he's going to be put into the abyss. He's still alive a thousand years later after Mashiach Abishai released him. And it's going to be the last time. Who going to follow the devil now? After Mashiach Abishai showed us of the Father and taught us for a thousand years. Now who's going to really follow him into the lake of fire? That's your judgment then. But both goats were presented before the Most High. Can Satan be presented before the Most High? Oh yeah. Because he's the left hand side of the Most High. But you see, Azazel was driven away from the Holy of Holies, a symbol of the Most High's presence. So he was moving away from him. So the Day of Atonement was instituted to last how long? Forever. To keep continually before the Most High's children, the children of Israel, and His people, the plan of redemption. That's going to happen in the second coming of Mashiach Yahushai. And we find this annual holy day recognized in the New Testament. It's right here. Go to Acts. 27 chapter Acts 27 a lot of people say oh that's the Old Testament now you gotta always come and understand all they had was the Old Testament people they didn't have no New Testament don't nobody fool you people don't believe in the Mashiach they don't believe in the New Testament they don't know the New Testament all they had was the Old Testament there wasn't no New Testament written Acts 27 and 9 now when much time was spent and when selling was now dangerous because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them, see? The fast, what do you think that fast is talking about? Day of Atonement. Tenth day of the seventh month. See? That's the fast that we observe. You see? He was on his uh, dangerous voyage to Rome, Paul was. When selling was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed. See, the fast, fast had already passed. It was already over. He already went through the Day of Atonement. That's the fast. You look in some of your Bibles, you look in the, in the middle of it, say Day of Atonement. Or it'll say the seventh month, the tenth day. Then you know that we observed the Day of Atonement. And Paul was the, pretty much one of the last writers. He wrote, wrote most of the New Testament. So it still was in existence. We observed it. Or unless the Holy Spirit couldn't have inspired, inspired those words that Paul is writing through the Holy Spirit or the Most High. Let us know 
as we we have seen, that we still observed it. And we still have to observe it coming back to our culture now. And that let us know that this day was still observed and still honored through the Holy Spirit. Because Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit for the time that he walked the earth. And as I said, I would go more into it, you know, just giving you a, I know it might have been a little kind of scratchy or whatever, but, you know, I'm glad that you bear with me for what I'm going through and what, you know, I'm trying to bring this about the best I can and the way I could. But like I said, we'll go more into it on the actual Day of Atonement. Most I will. I hope that was edifying. I hope you got something out of that. And um, we'll uh, talk more on it. As I say, the Day of Atonement actually will be on the first day at evening to the second day at evening. And with that I say Shabbat Shalom.